Already a number of companies have committed to put that money to good use. You heard about AT&T promising $1,000 bonuses to better than 200,000 workers. Comcast has similar plans. Wells Fargo doing some stuff. Now, you could read cynically into all of these developments that those companies have separate issues with the administration and critics, and maybe this is a good show of force. Whatever, it's happening, isn't it? Republican strategist Chris Nyland. We've got the Wall Street Journal's Shelby Holiday back with us, and Dagan, who has not slept, McDowell, uh, here with us. Dagan, um, yeah, you get me on. I'm never cynical. Right. No, 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 no. Uh, and I got you at that weak Jerry Lewis moment. It's the end of the telethon. Um, do you think that these companies, whatever their motivations, uh, one could cynically read an AT&T, maybe kinder treatment out of the Justice Department, indirectly through the president. But the, the fact of the matter is they are doing this stuff. What do you make of it? I think that this is a symbol to other companies in this country of this is how we're going to put this extra money to work. A again, Chuck Schumer lost his mind <laughs> over this. He's talking, he's come up with a list of companies that have been buying back stock. He's talking specifically about AT&T and the tens of thousands of jobs lost in recent years and their real tax rate. I will point to the banks and the telecom companies. They, in terms of industries and companies, will probably benefit benefit the most from this corporate tax overhaul because their businesses are largely in the United States. They don't get the currently the tax benefit of having intellectual property overseas, huh. business operations overseas. So they will have a much healthier tax rate for the most part. And they're stepping up and saying, yay. And I think the $15 minimum wage that we heard about from Wells Fargo and Fifth Third Bank Corp right. is kind of in, is intentional, right? It's to embarrass right. the Democrats. It essentially says to them, oh, you've been running on $15 minimum wage nationwide? Well, now we got it, and you essentially voted against it. That's a very good point. I think Wells Fargo's case, I gave them free checking accounts, which apparently people <laughs> were not eager for. Good deal. Uh, but Shelby, <laughs> let me get your take on it, because I, I think it, it's a curse of riches in a good way for these companies, because they have not only, to, to Degan's point, the, the lower rate, but they're going to have all that tax forgiveness, though, that comes back, trillions of which is right. going to be put to use. We don't know how much, but they can do both. They can buy back their own stock. They can do a lot of things that would make their shareholders happy and a lot of things that would make their workers happy. If they do right. both, then what? Well, they can do a lot of things. That's the thing. Democrats are trying to make this a binary choice. You can either return the cash to shareholders or you can hire workers. It's not, uh, it's not necessarily about that. They're investing so you think in these might be more the norm, what these companies are doing? Well, I think that the bonuses are a nice little cherry on top. They don't last very long. It could be to curry favor with the Justice Department. But the, but the thing that's really important here is the investment, the long-term investment in infrastructure and U.S. systems, construction projects. Those are the kind of things that will put a lot of Americans to work, even if they're not hiring them directly for their companies. But companies are also going to pay down debt. That will benefit them. There's, there's a rule in this tax bill that would hurt them if they continued to hold all this debt, so they'll pay it down. Yeah, you can't, that's true. You can't just sit right. on it, right? They'll yeah. also be buying other companies. A lot of companies said they'll look for more M&A opportunities. But generally, when they invest in these infrastructure, that's the key. When they right. say they're investing, you know that that could create other jobs indirectly. And, then, and, so, and the they're big, free, you got to stress, they're the free to do Republicans with their money what they want. And Boeing and Ember and the talks that they're going to be merging as a But it's very smart of them to come out and say, right. here's what we're doing Here's right what now. we're doing. Um, you know, uh, Chris, the, the, the rap against this behavior is that it'll be all one-sided to investors, as if that's a problem, because I think for a lot of companies plowing this dough or, or intending to back into their pension fund, especially public and private entities that might be underfunded, uh, that could shore up the futures and retirements of a lot of folks who up till now, it was looking kind of dicey, right? Yeah, I look at this in two parts, Neil. I mean, the first part's the Democrat response. The second is implementation. I think we can have some fair concerns with that. But, you know, there's a Democrat senator that had some real serious concerns, and we'll leave it nameless. It's not Senator Schumer, about the uh, uh, buybacks and dividends. His net worth is $250 million, you know. I mean, if, if growth policies work for Democrats in Congress, I think it should work for their constituents. I think that's fair to say that growth policies are going to help. And so when we look at implementation, I think it's fair. I'd like to see these tax cuts for the middle class be permanent, but I think it's fair to say that, you know, if the jobs aren't there and they don't invest in the workers, then maybe we, you know, hold people accountable at the ballot box. But for now, growth policies are in action, and President Trump's got this through, and it's tough to do these days to get Democrats and Republicans to it get something through. It is always tough. And I think, you know, Dagan, you were r raising it earlier this week, um, this notion that, you know, the history on tax cuts is that they come out the gate quite unpopular. 
um, this is unpopular. And you need to see what people are going to do with that money, how much they're going to see in, in net, in their paychecks come February, what they're going to do with that money. So it, th we won't know for sure what's your betting. I think that when the people's paychecks are bigger, I think when they realize, hey, I'm What if getting, they're not much bigger? I don't think it's the much. I think yeah. that also how we feel about our own financial situation is also um, informed by how our neighbors feel, how our, our local store owners feel. That's the, even living in New York City, as blue as it is, as left-wing, crazy liberal as it is, a lot of store owners this season good business, a lot of foot traffic. They're very happy. Yeah. So optimism begets optimism. So I don't think you need to get a you know, $1,000 raise in every paycheck for you to feel it because you feel it everywhere. You feel it at your company. If your company's spending money on you, if you're hiring, if they're redecorating the floor that you, that you, <laughs> sit, you sit on. Right, right. You know that I'm right. talking about where we work. Or <laughs> it's sushi around the clock. And who doesn't love sushi around the clock? <laughs> right. Sure. But I think that it is, it, it will help lift the general feeling in this country. And I think the reasons the Democrats are so mad, one, the blue states got hit by the state and local tax deduction essentially going away except for Absolutely. that $10,000. But they didn't think it would pass. They didn't think the Republicans were going to get it done. And now they're caught trous trousers, you know, right. half naked. I understand. Not completely I naked. Well, some of their arguments are, are good. You know, I think there should be some sort of concern for the national deficit, but that's not something people are going to feel enough. That's By the way, there was a lot more concern for the deficit and paying for the tax cuts than the nine yes. to ten trillion we added in traditional. And you spending. can laugh at the politics of it all, but but at the end of the day, people don't feel the national debt in their pocket. Oh, Nancy right now. Pelosi, they, they Nancy they Pelosi, talking rising. about Joe's six pack. She wouldn't know a six pack <laughs> if a Budweiser truck T-bone that Cadillac <laughs> limo that she's riding around in. Boy, aren't that was a singer. That was a good one. I, I'm serious, but I, again, right. now she's being folksy. Well, she orders the, Pinot Noir at Waffle is, House. Really? Yes. You can get it there? Yeah. No, you right. can't. Oh, that's oh, 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 oh. That's I, I was just wondering because I every time I run in there, I'm like, just fill it up. All right. A